Hello everyone, welcome to the very first video of my channel. So just for your introduction, I am Abid Chakraborty and working as a business analyst to at Cantar. Except that I am also pursuing my post-graduation diploma in artificial intelligence and machine learning from NIT Warangal. Also, I am a competitive machine learning enthusiast who used to take part in different machine learning hackathons in different websites. Now, my main intention to create this channel is so that I can share my approaches with all of you and probably get your feedback and we can learn together. So, so my first video is all about uh, the Jobathon that took place in the analytics with the in August 2022. Around 8,200 people registered in this particular hackathon and I got the first place here. Okay, so without any further delay, I am uh, going to the problem statement and, and my approach. Okay, the problem was about to predict the click-through rate of an email campaign. So they provided us a data of 1,800 rows and in the training set and 762 in the testing set. So this is a pretty small data and we need to be very cautious with this data set because uh, there is always a chance of overfitting due to this uh, less number of samples. Okay, now I am going to the um, each columns of the data. So the data provided us a dictionary, uh, data dictionary when we took um, when we took part in this particular jobathon. But uh, currently, after the jobathon is over, they have removed that. But I am trying to explain you um, as per um, my memory. Okay, so just I am just uh, checking for the columns, columns with data types and the missing values. So you can I can see that there are only one object type columns and rest of the columns are in the integer or float format. Okay, and yeah, and I can see there are 22 columns including the target and this is my target that is the click rate. Okay, now from the data recently i came to know there are there are so many categorical columns that is actually encoded in its numerical format so we need to find that and treat them accordingly now for uh, explorability data analysis i uh, took the help of this particular package named sweetviz so this is a very fine package uh, to um, which makes your job a lot more easy whenever you run this particular code a one kind of HTML report will generate and now we will go through each of the columns and we will find the um, we will we'll note our findings okay now the first row is the sorry the first column is the campaign ID so this is a pure noise and that is the unique ID of the um, of email campaign and we can totally drop it from from my from my final model then is the sender so it is in the numerical format but uh, that need to be converted to the string because as per that data dictionary it is a uh, actually a categorical column where each particular numeric value represent a unique category okay then we have the subject length of the email so this is the character of the uh, total total character of the subject that was in the email then the total character of the body of that particular email so these two are numeric column and we probably um, just keep it as numeric only then the mean paragraph length um, so that is the average size of the each of the paragraphs of this particular mail and then the day of the week so basically here uh, zero means uh, monday monday and six means sunday and the weeks are encoded in the numeric format now another um, particular thing i forgot to mention for this sweet piece so except this particular distribution and all the description of that particular column they also provide the correlation um, that is in um, the correlation of that particular column like day of week provides um, information on this this particular column this is the correlation when with day of the week and these are the uh, features that gives in us information for for the day of the week okay so you can see that it is uh, kind comes from the common understanding that is weekend is that the next column is the identifier if it is saturday or sunday so you can see that uh, it gives us around 26 uh, percent information of day of the week 
okay now the last uh, this this is the correlation ratio for with the different columns okay you can probably check the uh, check um, check the uh, different uh, and correlation if there is multicollinearity exist or probably the correlation with the target also and here is, this is a uh, just for each categories you can see also the distribution of in, in, in the percentage distribution of each individual group okay now coming to my data again so after the is weekend there is the times of day so this is the only pure categorical column present in the data set initially and i can see that there are only three groups even evening noon and morning okay then the category this is the same that needs to be converted to the categorical columns again because uh, that was mentioned in the dictionary then the type of the uh, products so same same goes for this also this is also a categorical column then number of cta mean cta length these two can be remain as numeric only okay then we have uh, some boolean flag that was mentioned in that that directionary but what i noticed that they are not exactly pure boolean we can see that if this is an image column so you, we we have uh, two three and and four and six also so from my common understanding what i realize that probably this is identified that i mean two means there are uh, two images in that particular mail or maybe three means three images but probably you can also um, keep a converted to one and zero like whenever it is zero it is zero whenever it is uh, greater than zero then keep it as one only whatever thing you, um, whatever you found this work best you should go with it okay for now for me i found that keeping it as a numerical column working best so i did not convert it to the boolean so each personally is totally a pure boolean column then same goes for the is code that's it that is that was also seem to be a boolean flag but uh, that can be treated as numerical uh, numeric also now i am coming the is timer later so emoticon also same now this is timer and is price these two are almost or totally unique columns and they can that can be dropped now is discount is a pure boolean column is urgency is also and this target audience is the cluster of the different group of the audience so that can be converted in the string also okay and this is my target that is the that is the click rate i am going to explore it in my later section okay so whatever i found in this particular sweetwiz report i noted here here you can probably pause your pause this video to have a quick look and i am just for just for my uh, easy understanding i just i mean run a for loop for the each of the columns to note the unique values and the total uh, na so there is no missing data in this column so you can see that all the any values is count is zero okay now i am going to explore the target a bit more in details so when i plot this particular target in a density plot i notice that the this data is highly skewed with lot uh, with lots of zeros so, okay so this kind of data can be uh, this kind of target can be performed poorly in a regression model and so that kind of data need to be need to be transformed in either square root or log transformation i have used this log transformation because i found it is it was working best so what i did is uh, just to get rid of all the zeros i just added one here first then i converted it into its logarithmic format and another advantage of log, 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 log conversion is that you will not have any uh, any negative value after training the model when you convert it to its original form okay now after the particular log is applied you cannot uh, see much much difference in the type of the plot but if you check the skewness you can see that the skewness is reduced to 3.68 from 4.31 so that is the sign that this uh, log transformation reduced the skewness a bit okay then there is a um, one of my function i created to explore the uh, effect of the categorical columns in the target so i i did not create a multiple cells for it to save the space in my notebook but probably you can change this uh, 
that um, uh, change the column name to uh, explore any other column so what it do, what it does is it takes three argument the first one is the data then is the feature column then is the target column okay and probably you can customize it as per your need so if you want median in, in place of mean so you probably you can replace it with median then my plot is by default uh, only shows first 10 of the first 10 uh, top uh, groups but if there are multiple groups and you want to check the total plot you can probably change the head also or remove the head okay now coming to the data processing and feature engineering part so first i uh, separate the feature and the target uh, from this uh, training data training and testing data and then after and then i combine the features in a single data frame so that i can pr pr do the processing part together okay so these are the columns of um, columns of my data set you can see that i have only took index of 1 to 21 of this column because i need to drop this uh, target uh, target variables in my in my feature data set and also i i dropped the zero that is the unique identifier of the campaign because that uh, that i am not going to use okay so the first thing what i did is uh, i i created uh, two different columns for Saturday and Sunday because what I noticed in, in this particular plot is that the effect of Saturday and Sunday is pretty much different and that can be in, can be treated in different features other than a single feature. So that's why I created a new column Saturday and I just uh, keep it one when they were in the week, day of the week is five. And for the East weekend, I just keep it one whenever there is the Sunday only, that is the weekday six. Okay, now there is the one of the interesting thing that the times of day is a categorical column, but we can convert it to its numeric format because uh, from our understanding, we know that noon comes after morning and after evening and from the previous plot what we saw that the effect of the morning is the target is the highest and the effect of the evening is the lowest so it is a monotone uh, it is the uh, continuously decreasing in order so if it is a, a, a continuously decreasing or continuously increasing when Uh, is numeric format because we are going to use these boosting tree models and they, they will took care of it okay now the next things i did is i converted uh, all the categorical columns to a string format that was uh, in the numeric representation earlier and after that there is a function where you can remove the outliers i did this particular thing when i first uh, solved this problem but later i commented it out because what i noticed that without removing the outliers the data is giving us giving me better performance and probably we should and we should not remove the outliers blindly okay so when we don't have any clear idea so whatever working based with your data just go for it Okay, then I created two nice features. One is the total CTA that is uh, the multiplying by number of CTA with mean CTA length and total number of paragraph that I found by total body. Okay, okay. so for um, building the final model, I used AutoML by FLML. I used different kind of methods earlier by but found that this kind of small data, this particular AutoML is performing better and here i have uh, mentioned the estimator list as lgm but they have other estimator also probably you can check the automail documentation by flml to get uh, much more details but for this particular data set uh, this lgb LG, light gpm is working best and here i kept uh, time budget 60 for the demonstration purpose but ideally you should uh, train for at least one hour for the big data and for this small data at least uh, 15 to 30 minutes uh, should be sufficient to give a good result okay the task is regression and the metric is r2 that was mentioned in the hackathon okay now i trained that model and i found that our uh, best r2 score is uh, r2 score is 0 0.582 but probably if i increase the time budget that might uh, that might increase a bit more okay after the uh, 
getting the prediction from this model what i did is uh, that is this is the predict express so i converted it to its original form because i did a log transformation so i first uh, take the exponential of this prediction and i subtract one from it so just the opposite thing that i did while converting okay then i check the feature importance so i, I can see the times of day and is weekend is a major factor of this particular um, problem and what gives me a really good feelings is that the two feature i created that total and pair you can see that um, these two are performing pretty these are these two are quite important feature for this particular model and probably that boosted my score a lot uh, to uh, help me in this particular hackathon now here i uh, do kind of new things uh, i have uh, created two additional features like sender versus cluster and category versus cluster so we discussed that that this target audience are different kind of uh, cluster of the audience and they might prefer a particular sender or a particular category so that's why i concatenate these two columns and you can see that these are the unique identifier for uh, that particular um, that particular groups okay so i just uh, trained the use that particular auto email by flml again and trained it and what i noticed that uh, the um, performance is increased a bit and also whatever features i created in the model 2 is also giving a very good high feature importance but uh, i finally decided to take the average of both the model in the final solution uh, probably if in, in a larger data set i am going i should go with the second approach only but uh, uh, what i realized that i have uh, around 1800 uh, observations and there are too many unique values in the in these two columns like sender versus cluster and category versus cluster so each sender versus cluster or category versus cluster group has very few observation and that might overfit the data a bit so that's why i stick with the average of both the models and finally i submitted in the, the analytics with the website and in the in the private leaderboard it give me score of r2 score of 0 0.6086 okay so that's it for the video i hope you enjoyed it if you like this video you can subscribe my channel because i am going to upload all the hackathons i took part in in recently and did a decent score and also the i will i will continue taking part in this kind of hackathon and sharing approaches with you you can follow me in the kaggle and check my other works in my code section so and you can re reach me by linkedin or by mail if you have any doubt in this video okay and i will attach this particular coding script in the description of the link i hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much